How's it going, guys? My name is Tavares, and today I answer questions that you guys had about my four-post lift. Let's get right into it. Now, I gave you guys a, a bit of an overview of this uh, lift. It's a four-post Pack HD9. So HD is uh, heavy duty, and nine stands for 9,000 pounds. I covered that in the last video, but you guys had a lot of questions, and uh, those are questions that I didn't cover. So this is gonna be basically a, a little bit of a, a detailed walkthrough of, uh, of this lift. And uh, you know, if you guys want a lift of your own, you know, maybe I'll shed some insight on that as well. The number one question I got was how much did it cost? And this one, the lift, the base price is about $2,899, like somewhere around $2,900. And that is for the regular lift in blue. I think that's the stock color that they have. If you want one in red like I have, I think that's an additional two or $300. So that brings the price up to somewhere around $3,100, $3,200. And then you have costs like the RJ45 jack that I have right back here. And it basically turns this lift into a, uh, I mean, kind of essentially two post lift. So this jack, is another $1,100. So it's air powered and I don't have it hooked up yet, but uh, it's air powered and it moves up and down the, uh, the rollers. So yeah, so that's $1,100. And the installation for this lift was $800. And I know that some of you who do have lifts at home might think that that's a little bit steep and it is. The reason why I paid so much is because <laughs> supply and demand. I mean, it's uh, locally, you're gonna have, especially in Florida, there are a lot of people with lifts in their garages so they can charge more uh, based on how much demand there is. So that was actually the cheapest quote I got. I got another quote for $1,400. So since I didn't wanna pay basically double, uh, I just decided to go with the $800 option and they did a pretty good job. They didn't mess up anything. Everything works like it should. And uh, I have no regrets about spending that kind of money. So altogether, it's around $5,000. The second question is, how tall does a garage have to be to have one of these lifts? Now, what you wanna do is like uh, garages and car setups are different for, uh, for every person. So I basically did a, uh, uh, you know, an inventory of my cars and how tall they are and basically stack them on top of each other. So I had my Lexus, I had my Mercedes, my Aston, and basically measured that and then added about 12 to 14 inches just to make up for the gap here and the gap here. And yeah, it's uh, everything fits perfectly fine. I think the minimum that uh, Ben Pack wants you to have is a 10 foot ceiling. This ceiling is 10 foot four inches, but if you see up there, it's like a little six inch uh, little cubby space there. And uh, that goes up to 11 feet. So it's, it's almost, it's pretty perfect that I can push the car just that little bit more. And if you see the uh, antenna is already hitting the ceiling, but that's not a problem. There is about a foot between, actually more than a foot, a foot between this uh, this car and the lift. And uh, yeah, no issues whatsoever. Another question people ask is, can you work on it on the side with the wall? Yeah, there's plenty of room to work. I can get in here easily. And uh, I actually have a little cutout here in my garage. So let's say I do want to work on one of the wheels and there's plenty of room to uh, get to it and put some tools on it. I don't think I'm gonna do anything, you know, too extensive on this side, but, you know, it's a little tighter than, than the other side, but it's not that bad. There's plenty of room to work and I can get out just as easily. Another question I got is, can the dually, that uh, monstrosity over there, can that fit on the lift? Uh, no, it can't. It, can, it can't even fit in my garage. Uh, I have to basically take this all the way in and the ass end is still sticking out. So no, it's not even close. I, I'm pretty sure the dually is more than 9,000 pounds anyway, even if I could fit it on. So yeah, that's, that's a no go. So I'm gonna still have to work on the dually outside if I need to do stuff like um, take out the, uh, the fuel tank, which I'll need to do. Uh, that's gonna have to be done right 
out there, which is no fun, but it's only one car. So uh, the rest of my cars fit on here, no problem at all. Another question I got was, can I stand underneath it? And the answer is yes, I am. This is basically my eye height. So right here, you know, if I don't duck, I'd run straight into here. But if I do duck and go underneath there, there's plenty of room to uh, work on whatever car I have up there. And yeah, I, I, this is definitely above my head and I can stand up without crouching. And that is a really big plus because it sucks to, to crouch all day and especially exert force on uh, you know, a bolt that uh, just isn't coming off. So that's, that's a real plus. I think with taller cars, it might be a little bit of an issue, but there still is a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a gap on the uh, right there. So I could probably get this a little higher if I needed it. Um, so that would help on taller cars. Next question I got was, am I bolting this to the floor? I don't think so. Um, I do have the bolts that will bolt it to the floor and those would go right here. Now, this is a freestanding lift, meaning that you can move it around if you need to. Ben Pack actually sells casters that, that you put on here and there's like pivoting casters. So if you wanted to move this around, I don't, I don't have the space to, but let's say if I have a bigger garage and you wanted to move it around, you could. This is pretty sturdy. It, uh, when there is a car on here, it doesn't shake. Um, I mean, if I really, really wanted to rock it back and forth, I can get some movement out of it. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, if it gets to the point where I'm concerned about the, the structural rigidity, I could always drill into the concrete. Reason I didn't is because I have no idea how thick the concrete is. I think the concrete should be fine since this entire house is on a concrete slab like most houses in Florida are, but I didn't want to chance it. So that's why I didn't do it. Plus it's just easier to install and maneuver. And uh, I don't know if I wanted to move it around, you know, maybe, uh, you know, further away from the wall. Uh, I still have to work on it a little bit and, uh, and see what the final placement is. But for now, this is totally fine and it's very, very workable and safe. Another question I got was, how long does it take to lift a car? Now, this is the 110 volt pump and they do make a 220 volt. The 220 volt basically just works faster. Uh, it has different windings and it does work a bit uh, faster to get the cars in the air. This, however, it's, it's no slouch. Uh, it takes about 50-ish seconds, so less than a minute to get the car from the floor to, uh, to its highest setting, or rather the setting where, uh, where it rests. And um, yeah, it's not, it's not bad at all. I don't feel like it's sluggish, it's, uh, it's quite powerful. And I don't think you'll need, it actually doesn't pull that many amps. Uh, usually when I have like something like an air compressor, and my air conditioner working at the same time, I pop the circuit breaker and I have to reset it, but I can run the air conditioner and I can run this lift and nothing happens. So I am gonna have to do some electrical work to get uh, a different circuit for all these things, but for now, you know, just for the install, this is totally doable. Now the question I got was how high is the door? Um, the door is a regular 16 by seven door. So it's 16 feet wide and seven feet tall. And uh, the door, I had to have the door raised, uh, or rather the, the rails for the garage door raised. And you can see that uh, they hug the ceiling a little tighter than they would normally. And they also, uh, well, they hug the ceiling and they allow the garage door to uh, come in a little bit shorter than you usually would. And the reason I did that is obviously so it won't hit the car. But another thing I did, I had to do, was when I bought the house, it had a garage door opener right in the middle. And that would have gotten, I mean, in retrospect, it probably wouldn't have gotten in the middle of anything uh, because the car is off to this side. But I didn't want to take any chances, so I got this LiftMaster 8500. And that is a jack shaft opener, and it's right there. It's uh, out of the way. It's pretty quiet, I, I like it. The only thing I don't like is that it doesn't have a number pad opener. So eh, my old one had a number pad opener, but it's not a big deal. I still have the regular remote like, uh, like always. But uh, yeah, you can see that it's not, uh, it's not hitting the car, it's not close to hitting the car. Even though it is a bit tight, it's not close uh, 
to any damage. So uh, that is a big, big plus. And the last question I have is, why didn't I just get a two post lift? Since I'm gonna be doing work on cars and two post lifts are usually better for cars, um, better for car work than four post lifts would be. That is a very valid question. And I thought I was gonna get a two post lift for a long, long time. Uh, because I liked the versatility of it. I like the fact that uh, basically, for those of you who don't know, two post lift has one post in the middle right here and another post on the other side. And it has these arms that, uh, that extend and grab the car like right here. And then they, they lift the car like that. Uh, you can still park a car underneath, but instead of it being on its wheels, you can take off its wheels, you can do suspension work and you can do all that sort of fun stuff. But, the issue with that is sometimes I have cars that are rusty. Sometimes I have cars that I'm not sure what the structural integrity of them are. And uh, I also make mistakes sometimes, as you guys uh, know. So I didn't want to chance it. I didn't want to chance having a car fall uh, at any point. So this, even if I have it on the, uh, the jack, like let's say I put it on here and the wheel is off, the wheels are off and the jack for some reason fails or the jack or the car slips off the jack. I don't know how it would, but let's, let's just say the jack for some reason fails. This would fall onto the lift. So that wouldn't be a problem. It wouldn't kill me. And uh, that would certainly be a life-saving situation. So that's pretty much the major reason why I got a four post lift. Four post lifts are more expensive than two post lifts. And they, I, I mean, just because it's, it's, it's more material. Uh, another reason why I got it is, again, the fact that I didn't have to drill it into the concrete. I didn't know how, how uh, thick the concrete was. And if you look at a channel like Adam LZ, he just got a, uh, he lives in Central Florida as well. He just got a two post lift and them having to drill into the uh, ground that looked a little sketchy and I didn't want to use that for my garage, especially not when I have something like this, which is like 4,000 pounds. And let's say I'm taking out an engine from a really heavy car and the weight shifts and I don't want that thing to, to keel over or whatever. That would never ever happen with this lift. So that's a, a major reason why I got a four post instead of a two post. And that is it. I know it was a short video, but I hope I answered some of your questions uh, about this lift. I don't think I could be any more detailed, really. If you, if you, uh, if you need to know something, you probably just Google it like, uh, like I did. But uh, I am very, very excited to start working, start some major, major builds with this thing. And uh, I want you to come along with me. So uh, thank you for being there uh, for, for all of my, uh, my rusty antics. As always, like, comment, subscribe. I really, really enjoy it when you guys give me feedback on my videos. It, it helps me get better uh, every time. I mean, I hope I'm getting better. Thumbs down if you didn't like the video, but thumbs up if you did. And I hope you did like this video because I'm liking this lift. But stay tuned because next time, that's when I 